The infamous Darien Gap covers 10,000 square miles between Panama and Colombia and is the only point of land connecting North and South America. This area is a stretch of tangled rainforest, mountains, and swamp with zero roads to speak of. It is one of the few untouched places left in the world. Even now, there are no marked trails. Satellite phones rarely get a signal, and your risk of contracting the Zika virus, dengue fever, or malaria is extremely high. Adventurers visiting Panama set out into the treacherous jungle, hiking to Palo de Letras, where a stone obelisk marks the invisible lines separating North and South America. In the middle of nowhere and delirious, after trekking through 95 degree heat and 95% humidity, these hikers stumbled upon what must have been incomprehensible to them, the rusted wreck of a car in the middle of a jungle. Happening upon an old abandoned car, that's not so strange. But if you're in the middle of the Darien Gap, miles and miles away from the nearest town in one of the most remote places in the Americas, then it gets weird. How did a sedan end up abandoned in the middle of this treacherous stretch of jungle. This strange place is almost like a Bermuda Triangle on land. Often things that venture into the jungle don't come out again. The Pan American Highway is a continuous network of roads traversing the entire Americas, from Alaska to Argentina, and measures approximately 19,000 miles long. That is except for the 66 miles of the Darien Gap between Yavisa, Panama and Turbo, Colombia. The Darien Gap is legendary for being a truly wild no man's land. Long before the establishment of Panama and Colombia as the countries we know today, Spanish conquistadors landed on these shores in 1501. Early on when the conquistadors tried to tame this region, it didn't go so well. The Spaniards ended up giving up on this and moving on. In Spanish, we call it El Tapón del Darien, the Darien plug, in reference to its complete impassibility and how it effectively plugs up any traffic that wants to get across. However, this hasn't exactly stopped everyone from trying to get across and explore this region. The Scottish tried to settle the gap at the end of the 17th century. But the mission ended after only two years because of how poorly planned it was, and it resulted in a tremendous amount of human suffering and financial cost. Every attempt at colonization failed miserably, which left the land to its rightful indigenous inhabitants. There are approximately 45,000 people still living within the gap. The Mbarawunan and Kuna people, descendants of the original people believed to have lived here for thousands of years, as well as Afro-Indigenous peoples who are descendants of escaped slaves. While it's possible the car belonged to one of these local community members, they live primarily traditional lifestyles and rely mostly on boats and canoes. So who else could have brought it here? Deep in the jungle of the Darien Gap, between Panama and Colombia, the wreck of a red car is found miles from the closest road. Who would have brought it there? The remoteness of the Darien Gap has made this place an incredible wilderness. However, that same lack of presence of major human activity has also turned it into a hotbed for lawlessness. Even without the roads and without the highways, well, sadly, illegal activity seems to always find a way through. The guerrilla force FARC Fuerzas Armadas Revolucionarias de Colombia has a strong presence in the Darien Gap, trafficking drugs and weapons through the area. Beyond drug trafficking, there are many human traffickers willing to take money in exchange for attempted passage. Refugees and undocumented migrants risk their lives trekking through the gap. It's a harrowing journey of up to a week with zero guarantees that they'll make it to the other side safely. If you're trying to slip by border guards, you're probably not picking a bright cherry red car. It seems likely that anybody who did bring this car had very little practical knowledge of what they were getting into. Many hours north of the car through the jungle is a rusted out shell of a locomotive. 
The rails have been absorbed by the jungle floor, but the corroded engine car remains, bound in place with thick vines. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, foreign mining operations began to arrive in Panama. This train and the remains of other imported industrial materials are the remnants of an abandoned British gold mine at Santa Cruz de Cana. This light rail engine once navigated a 30-mile stretch between the mine and Boca de Cupe, transporting gold, supplies, and workers back and forth. So could the car be a British import used by the mine's foreign operators? The windows and tires are long gone, and the body, hood, and trunk have no identifiable branding or insignia on them. When the explorers examine what remains of the car's overgrown interior, they notice that the steering wheel was located on the left-hand side. Vehicles in the United Kingdom drive on the opposite side of the road from vehicles in North America. If this were an English vehicle, the steering column would be on the right-hand side of the car. Something else stands out about the car. The engine is not where it should be. This vehicle's engine was positioned at the back of the car, where the trunk would normally be found. Rear engine design, where the engine is placed at the back end of the vehicle, was once popular in inexpensive commercial vehicles. And it's still seen today as a design feature in cars like Porsche or more recent electric car designs. To a car enthusiast, the engine position, the style of the roof line with its rear overhang, and the overall shape of the frame point to one particular rear-wheel drive vehicle, the Chevy Corvair. The Chevy Corvair is an American-made passenger vehicle that was introduced in 1959 and quickly rose to popularity, even gracing the cover of Time magazine as Car of the Year. The Corvair's rear-mounted engine with rear-wheel drive, unibody construction, and independent suspension were supposed to be revolutionary. But in reality, the Corvair had a major flaw in the rear suspension that meant if it swerved quickly, it was liable to flip over. The safety record greatly affected the sales and production. The Corvair was only produced for 10 years, and it wasn't sold in Central or South America. And yet, it's here. Even if somebody tried to drive it all the way down from the US, they would have invariably hit a dead end when the Pan American Highway stops. How did it get here? Here was a challenge to really put a car through the mill. The Chevrolet Corvair accepted the challenge. So it was decided to send a Corvair caravan of three cars and two supply trucks from here to there. In 1960, a Chevy dealership in Chicago funded an adventurous project to create two promotional films, highlighting the Corvair's charms in the harshest of conditions. In January of 1961, a team of 12 men started off from Panama City with three Chevy Corvairs and three support vehicles to drive across the Darien Gap into Colombia. They were hoping that the completed films would sell more cars, but there was a lot that they did not account for. The Darien Gap has difficult terrain, fast flowing rivers, steep slopes, thick vegetation, and muds that stop most cars in their tracks. They didn't stand a chance, and this ended up being one of the most poorly executed and ill-advised PR stunts that I have ever come across. To make any amount of progress, the team had to physically cut their way through the vines, build makeshift wooden bridges, and construct rafts to float the cars across dangerous rivers. Along the way, they lost two support vehicles to the steep and rugged terrain, including their fuel truck. The team only needed to travel roughly 70 miles, a distance one could easily cover in well under an hour in ordinary circumstances. But this journey was anything but ordinary. After a grueling four and a half months, only two Chevys made it to the other side. So why, after all of that effort, did they leave this one Corvair behind? A local park guide remembers that there was a significant miscalculation with the amount of gasoline in one of the vehicles, and it ran out. They sent some team members to get fuel, but
but the car had already been scavenged for parts by the time they returned to collect it. The Corvair ultimately would give its all to its mission, and now it sits abandoned in the middle of the jungle, a monument to the unrelenting and fierce power of this amazingly difficult landscape.